Hey guys, Auspicious Ozzy here, and welcome to episode 17 of the Inter Miami series. And today's episode is going to be the 2022 Super Draft in the MLS. Always a pretty exciting episode, to be honest, because, you know, we get to see the new players that are going to be obviously coming to the club. But the whole draft system itself is, I, I don't know, I just find it relatively exciting. And I know a lot of you out there... Uh, the Super Draft episode seemed to have done a little bit better than some of the episodes previously and even afterwards. So, yeah, let's get straight into it. I'm going to do it in a similar sort of fashion as the last episode. We're just going to go through the whole first round, possibly some of the second round, and to, at least until our second pick, if that makes sense. You know, we did do rather well this season in the Supporter Shield. Uh, which I think is how the draft is to I think it's how the draft is determined. I'm not 100 percent sure if that is exactly correct, but just looking at the draft here, we have a lot of Montreal Impact and New England Revolution, and we're throwing in a few Columbus there as well. It's heavily, heavily dominated by Montreal picks. They got the first, they got three of the first four picks. Uh, then New England have. 5th, 6th, and 8th. I mean, Montreal has another pick in there. So they got five picks in the first 16 draft picks. So realistically, they will probably get all the best players. So, you know, with us doing as well as we have done, I think the the draft picks we're going to get this season probably not going to be setting the world alight. Let's, let's just say that. It's going to be a fairly long episode, so make sure you hit the like button nice and early, guys. And remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's get straight into it. See the first pick. So the first pick, the Montreal Impact have chosen Dennis Oliver, who is probably the best pick, obviously, going first as well. Um, I had this guy shortlisted, as you can see. He was going to be one of my picks, but obviously I kind of knew that he was going to go fairly early on and uh unfortunately yeah he, yeah he has so goodbye dennis moving on to pick number two uh so montreal uh was it montreal columbus so columbus have traded with chicago fire for the second pick and they've chosen 24 year old colin lullis i'm not really a big fan of him i think i think that's a bit of a wasted pick yeah, that's not a good pick by Chicago. You would have to assume they really need a left back, maybe? Anyway. Third pick, Montreal Impact. Choose 21-year-old forward Mark Egan. Again, not exactly the best pick. I feel like there are better players in the draft at the moment. This guy is okay. His physicals are somewhat decent. Uh, really good mentals, to be fair, for a striker, but nine finishing for a striker is really just not that good. All right, so with the fourth pick of the draft, we have Montreal once again, and they pick 21-year-old fullback Ken Senior. I mean, he's he's not bad. This is sort of the the level of the first round draft picks, I, I would say. Like, he's not setting the world alight, but he's probably somewhat of an average MLS player, in my opinion, at least coming from the draft. All right, so the fifth pick, we have New England, and they have traded with Columbus. Very weird, considering Columbus had the second pick. Uh, but they choose 21-year-old goalkeeper Reese Harrington, who is not good at all. That's that's a weird one. That is a very, very weird pick. You can find better goalkeepers in some of the some of the Academy teams. That's that's such a weird pick. Anyway, fair play to Columbus. I mean, seems pretty wasteful. Alright, New England finally, you know, actually get to choose someone. And they choose 21-year-old goalkeeper Ian Nixon. 
who is also pretty average. Only got 10 reflexes. Nine handling. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not too sure about these goalkeepers, man. It just seems so wasteful. All right, they got another two picks if they don't trade them. They do trade this one to Minnesota United. And they pick 21-year-old centre-back Dave De La Cruz. Okay, realistically on paper, he doesn't look too bad. I mean, the seven heading, that's pretty brutal. But at the same time, he's got really good physicals for the MLS. But, you know, for this age, like... Good positioning, I mean, good marking. That's a, that's, that's a bad, like, that's a bad pick, but a good pick at the same time. And what I mean by that is, he's going to be good enough to be a backup, but at the same time, I still feel like there's better players out there. But I mean, some of these teams are obviously going to be picking not based on the best players. They're going to be choosing the best player in a sort of position that they need. So, it's a good pick, but then again, it's also, there's better out there, is what I'm trying to say. All right, next pick. The New England trade another first round pick away or, or to the San Jose Earthquakes and they pick 21-year-old goalkeeper Andrew Navarro. As you can see, this guy is so much better than both the other goalkeepers that were picked already. I really just don't understand. I mean, he's a perfect sweeper keeper as a backup. 15 rushing out, 14 reflexes, 15 punching, 12 handling. Like... Sometimes I don't understand these teams and what they're sort of going for. But that's, it's so weird. He's much better than the other two. Anyway, moving on to Montreal yet again. And they pick 21-year-old goalkeeper Tim Mooney. I mean, realistically, on paper, he also kind of looks better than the other two, the first two goalkeepers that were picked. Good reflexes, pretty good handling. I mean, the rest of his stats are pretty bad, but it's just a weird thing. It's a weird thing to see those goal, goal, like, the goalkeepers were bad, and they're going so early on. I mean, it's a good thing for us, as you can see, our picks are down here, number 18 and number 20. So let's go to the next pick. San Jose Earthquakes pick 20-year-old Chris Cantu, and uh, San Jose traded with Colorado Rapids. And this is one of the players I think I was looking at. Yeah, as you can see on the short list, looks very, very solid. This is what I'm talking about. There's players like this. This guy's got really good pace, good strength, 15 finishing, 13 heading, pretty good composure and off the ball. And he's 20 years old, so he's a little bit younger than some of the other players. And he's going this late. It's just so weird. And some trash goalkeepers are being chosen early. Yeah. Kind of boggles the mind a little bit. Anyway, 11th pick. New England Revolution pick 21-year-old midfielder Oscar Santos. I mean, he's, he's more of a, a winger, but yeah. He also looks pretty good. This is what I'm talking about. There's a lot of better players that some of these teams should have been picking, in my opinion. 12th pick, Columbus Crew. They trade with Nashville SC. And they pick 21-year-old forward Steve Bumpos. Now, he looks really good. Was he on my shortlist? He was not on my shortlist. Okay. He's got really, really good pace and some pretty good attacking stats. 14 composure there as well. I might actually put him on the shortlist for the future. Might be able to trade for him at some stage. Or maybe his contract might run out. Uh, but he looks like he might do pretty well. In the MLS. Alright, next pick. We've got New York Red Bulls. Uh, however, they also trade with Nashville. For their draft pick. And Nashville pick 21-year-old midfielder. Gary Gordon. As the 13th pick. Again, another really good player. Right winger. Good pace. Passing. Pretty average crossing, dribbling and first touch. But, you know. He, he's of a, a, decent, a decent backup level. I would say in the MLS. All right, next up we have the Vancouver Whitecaps. And with the 14th pick, they choose 21-year-old midfielder Jason Garcia from Trinidad and Tobago. He's okay. He's probably... 
I don't know. He's not that good. He's got 10 caps for the, the Trinidad and Tobago national team with uh, with one goal there as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, but I don't think he's going to achieve much in the MLS. All right, next pick, we've got DC United. And they pick 21-year-old midfielder Francisco Javier Gomez, another right winger. Uh, and as you can see, the quality is getting less and less and less. He's got good pace. But the uh, the rest of him's not so good. I'm a little bit nervous now because I, I feel like some of the better players have actually been chosen in sort of the last like six or seven picks. All right, next up Montreal. They pick 21 year old midfielder Scott Mirabelli. Pretty average attacking midfielder, Canadian as well. Obviously Montreal Canadian Canadian MLS team. All right, next up, Chicago Fire. We're one pick away from our first pick. And Chicago Fire pick 21-year-old forward, Carlos Hernandez. Who's, you know, he's not too bad either. Really bad sort of technicals, but really, really good physicals. And uh, pretty decent mentals there as well. Not a bad pick. But um, I probably wouldn't be picking him, to be honest. All right, so here we go. We've got our first pick. Now comes the, the time of the episode where we have to go through and first of all, look at the players that I've shortlisted, which there aren't really a lot because the ones that have been shortlisted have either already been taken. This guy looks pretty good. I was kind of tempted to go for him. He's got a weird name though, Froshawa, Froshawa. Yeah, for a shower. As you can see, Gary Gordon's already been. Jesus Lopez. Yeah, I mean, I got him, I put him on there because he's a box-to-box. -box. Well, he's relatively good at that role. And he's got good stamina, good natural fitness. I thought maybe because we, we have lost one of our center mids uh, from the previous draft. Uh, we've got Paul Martin here. More of an attacking midfielder. Jake Knave. You know what? He might be a, a decent pick. He doesn't actually look too good. But it's very, very hard to find center backs with good passing. I, I don't think we'll go for him. Not not at this stage, maybe later. Later in the draft. Uh, but realistically, there's probably not too many more players. Sometimes these uh, international players can be quite good as well, so we might have a look at a few of those. Chinese striker. Not too bad. Alrighty. I think realistically, I think we're going to go with the striker. Yeah, for a shower. I think he's the, the best option. I know we have a lot of strikers at the moment. But there's just, there's just no one really better than him at the moment in the draft. I mean, I could be missing quite a few players, but... I mean, he's okay as well. We might shortlist him, possibly for the for the next pick there. I mean, I can also go through and just sort of have a look at some of the players that have interest in them. As you can see, Chicago Fire are interested in this player. Got some more players down here. This guy's got got really good pace. Wanted by Atlanta United. Ooh, he's not too bad either. Graham Cooper, also wanted by Atlanta. At the moment, I feel like it's between Escamilla for our first pick and um, what's his name? I've completely forgotten his name. Probably going to butcher it again. Yeah, Froshauer. 
So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Frost Shower. All right, there we go. Frost Shower is our first pick. 18th overall pick. We've got New York Red Bulls, and they are picking 21 year old. Well, they got it from Nashville. They're picking 21 year old midfielder Brady Gentry. As you can see, he's uh he's not too good. So yeah, perfect. All right, what we're gonna do now? We're gonna grab the other guy, Escamilla. Oh, he's actually wanted by Columbus Crew, so that's perfect. So I'm gonna pick him, and then I think we're gonna retrain him as a center mid. Try and get him in uh in so he, he does kind of fit the box to box midfielder role. Um, so I think we'll yeah we'll just pick him as the twentieth draft pick overall. There we go. Up next, we've got 21-year-old fullback AJ Ganta, and he has joined the Vancouver Whitecaps. Another Canadian. I mean, he's not too good, to be fair. But obviously, the Canadian teams do get sort of the short end of the stick, really. You know, the, a lot of the Canadian players, it's very rare for one of them to be quite good. Um, they do have their academy teams and stuff like that, but... The draft really doesn't favor them, whereas it does favor the American teams a lot more. Anyway, moving on to another Vancouver pick. They pick 21-year-old center back Brian Kane, another Canadian, as you can see. And as you can tell, he's not exactly very good. There we go. All right, 23rd pick, Minnesota United pick Marco Vera, 21-year-old center back. He's not too bad. I mean, he's got some good strength, jumping reach, marking, tackling. Not too bad. All right, ne up next we have, what, two more picks for New England Revolution. And then they also have the first pick of the... Oh, sorry, three more picks. And then they have the second pick of the second round. They, they are going to trade a couple of them away, probably. So Chicago Fire have traded for the 20... Fourth overall pick, and they get 21 year old midfielder Eduardo Cantu. I mean, he looks he looks better than some of the other ones that have gone earlier. Good pace, you know, good first touch. Dribbling is pretty average. Uh, 20 aggression though, so that's interesting. Up next we have New England, and they do indeed pick with their first pick, and they pick Jesus Lopez, one of the players that I was sort of interested in a little bit. The sort of box-to-box -box midfielder. Probably would have been my next pick, maybe. Um, so it's going to be interesting. All right, let's do... I think the last... Yeah, the last pick of the first round. And New England do keep their pick, and they choose Devante Reynolds. Very, very below average right winger there. As you can see, the quality has definitely dropped off uh, throughout the first round. What I'm going to do now is skip to my next pick, uh, which is very, very late on. We're in the third round. We didn't actually have a second round pick because I did actually trade it away. Now, the real question is, do I actually want to pick anyone? Because, I mean, this guy, Jake Nave. Nave or Nave? I don't know. He's still available, but, I mean, the real question is, do I actually want to pick him? I kind of don't. So I think we're actually going to pass and finish here. And uh, we'll complete the draft. There we go. I mean, as you can see, most of the teams are, are sort of just passing. Uh, I mean, there are actually a few teams here that have decided to use all their picks. Like Chicago, New, Eng or New England finally passed in this round. Yeah, interesting. Alrighty. As you can see, Chicago were wanting to sort of trade for our picks. Wait, what? How, is this, this has to be a bug. Why can't I offer? That's so weird. It won't. It won't let me offer him a contract. 
is not currently interested. That has to be a bug. Has to be a bug. Because we have Escamilla here. And he obviously is happy to negotiate. Just going to be giving him a senior minimum salary. Works out rather well. But yeah, that's so weird. For a shower. Our first round, our first pick in the draft. And he's not even interested. I'm, I'm super confused. Can I advance? Let's see if advancing does anything. I'm a little bit mind blown that that has sort of just happened. Now, if we look at the grades, I mean, the grades don't really mean anything. It's more if you use all of your draft picks, you get like a better rank. Um, apparently, we got a C plus. I guess, you know, we, we had two first round picks, so kind of makes sense. All right, there we go. There's all those players. We get Escamila into the club, but let's go back down here. I want to have a look at this again. Where is he? Froschauer. So he's available on a free transfer. Can I go to sign him now? That is so weird. I've never seen that before, ever. I mean, even still, we do actually own the draft rights to him. So other, other clubs would ha literally have to trade us stuff to get the rights to actually sign him on a free transfer, if that makes sense. That's sort of how it works in the MLS. But I have never seen that before. Honestly, never seen that before. There we go. Senior contract, 1k per week. That's... It actually is confusing me so much. As you can see, we have the player rights and we got him in the super draft. So, yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this episode up. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed the super draft. I always enjoy making these episodes. I really do. And uh, like I said, hopefully you have enjoyed it. And if you haven't given the video a like already, please make sure you smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And yeah, make sure you look out for the next episode. Hopefully, we'll be getting a few players in. Also worth mentioning, we're in the CONCACAF Champions League. Probably should have mentioned that at the start of the episode. Uh, but as you can see, somehow we've made it in. I think it's because we finished third in the Supporter Shield. And then Orlando and LAFC, I think they made it to the MLS Cup Final. So, I think, therefore, I've been given the Supporter Shield qualification. I want to say that's the reason why. Um, that's sort of my thought process behind it anyway. Uh, but yeah, first round we're taking on Real Esteli, who are from Nicaragua. Very interesting. We should be able to beat them quite easily and hopefully advance into that second round. But yeah, that's going to be it for the episode, guys. Thank you for watching. And as always, take it easy and goodbye.